Let's talk about what's going on with Auburn football. Uh, Austin Davis, the offensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers, formerly the quarterback's coach of the Seattle Seahawks, has decided to step down as the OC at Auburn, and he released a statement, and I'm not going to read the statement verbatim, but he said basically that this is a personal decision. He is going to step away, spend more time with his family, etc. He's only 30 years old. Uh, this was his first coordinator job. He has not worked in college football uh, up until he worked for them for the last month or so. But this was incredibly surprising. So Brian Harson will now have his third offensive coordinator in really his first calendar year on the job, and he's already on his second defensive coordinator. Uh, that's five coordinators in one year. Uh, I don't know necessarily that this has anything to do with what is going on with Brian Harson at Auburn, but you have to imagine that there is something happening that people don't like or don't feel like they can succeed there or some, something strange is going on. Now, Gus Malzahn used to rotate offensive coordinators here and there, right? He, he lost Chip Lindsey to a head coaching job, and then he brought in Chad Morris, and he brought, like, uh, there were a bunch of different things going on with Gus Malzahn, but he always maintained either the defensive side or the offensive side for at least several years. This one feels different. Hey, Chris, what are your thoughts on what's going on with these Auburn coordinator hires? I, I'm very – if if the OC stepping away really doesn't get another job, doesn't take another job, and and they genuinely do go spend time with their family – then, then we have to take them on their word at that. Right. Okay. But if this is an Urban Meyer, I'm going to go spend time with my family, and then six months later, I just have another job. Um, then, then I think we've got a, a, a different situation. It's strange that these coordinators are stepping down before they have another job. I've never seen that before. That could become a trend with people now. But but I find that to be weird because when Derek Mason did it, like we all kind of speculated about him going to Oklahoma State. But usually you find out they're leaving one job when they get the other job. And it's both being reported basically at the same time. And that was a I'm leaving and now I have a new job. This is very much because I, I, I didn't know the part about him stepping down for personal reasons and stuff. I just thought yeah. he stepped away and I thought – that's really strange. We've never had this before, and two coordinators do it, and they do it to the same head coach at the same school. You know, that doesn't make sense. Then you learn about the, you know, uh, uh, the part about, oh, it's this personal time. That, man, I don't want to call a guy like, I don't know. A guy. Well, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I agree. It's not like he's a well-known OC that, that you know, I'd followed his career for a while and, and whatever knew who he was. But it's one of those things that I need I need to look at this through the scopes of 18 months from now. I'll, I'll give you an opinion on what I actually think about it. Or it because might even if, be if, within a few months if he is to oh, take well, another job, right? Well, no. If he right. takes another job before next year, like if he's coaching for somebody else next calendar year, then we got then I have all the information I need. It. Okay. And, and my opinion on that. So I'm going to work from that premise. Okay. I don't think this is anything other than guys. He got there. He accepted the job. He got there and, and he realizes this is a sinking ship. He, yeah. from whatever reason believes Brian Harson's not going to be the coach after this year. And if I stay here, I'm just going to get fired. And, and, and it so, could look bad on his resume, et cetera. And right. So it's better. So, it's better for me to walk away now because I know we're, I'm going to have to coach through a season where the head coach doesn't have the support of the 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 big players involved or the administration. Yeah. Let me let me and, read and you what his statement would, was. It's, it's that would be that would be my assumption of yeah. what I think is probably happening if he takes another job. That's it. yes, a hundred percent. Here's what he said in his statement. All right, uh, the last week has been difficult for me as I've made the decision to step away from college football uh, or from coaching football. Excuse me. Auburn University and Coach Harson have been tremendous through this whole process. I am grateful for the opportunity that was presented to me from a coaching standpoint, and equally as important, the way Coach Harson has handled my current situation. 
My decision to resign is 100% based on personal reasons. After more than a decade in the NFL with the daily grind as a player and coach, I've realized how much I miss my family and my desire to spend more time with them. While I need to step away from coaching, I can't say enough about the first-class way I was welcomed into the Auburn family and the way this football program is run with a championship mindset and a focus on developing these young men into winners on and off the field. Um, so that's, you know, if if all of this is true, if he doesn't take another job, if he's really stepping away and taking a year or so to figure out, hey, what do I really want to do, then okay. I, I can totally get that. He is really young, and he jumped from playing football at Southern Miss to the NFL to coaching in the NFL to now coaching here. At, I understand. It can be a lot, right? Because there is no real downtime when you're doing that. But on the other side, uh, and and for all the people that are on Twitter that were jumping back and forth and said, I, yeah, he was at Seattle, and then he comes down to Auburn and realized, oh, crap, I'm going to have to live in Alabama. That was not it. This guy's from Meridian, Mississippi. He played at Southern Miss. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's Auburn is is. I'm not going to say a step up, but it's very similar, right? It's he has been down there. He knows what's going on down there. Uh, Living this, in the South, it's something else. your entire life, moving to Seattle would have been a culture shock. Yes. Now he could get to Seattle and really like living in a big city like that, and and that's fine. He could enjoy that, but but he would have never accepted the Auburn job because he knew what this was. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know where they go next. I don't know what his connections are. Uh, Harson, I mean, he's he's been around a lot of guys, but he's going to be hiring his third offensive coordinator in about 13 months, and that's rough. That's rough, especially it's after strange. replacing the D.C. So part of, like, his statement, I hate. Like, I hate it. Like, I hate you were there for six weeks. Please don't talk like you know that all these people are, you know, you know, running a professional program and, and, and this is not, I'm not trying to shit on the Auburn program. I'm I'm kind of the Auburn program defender here, but you were there for six weeks, dude. You, you have no idea what these people are working towards or what their motives are, or, you know, how, they hadn't how even class, coached a practice. How, how class of an organization yeah. they run. They could be all of those things that you said they are, but you damn sure don't know that. And you're the last person that we should be listening to about saying it. You're trying to say nice things because you're in a tough spot where you're leaving a job very, very quickly. Now, if this guy goes and opens a camp or does something like that, well, because that is not working 24-7, 365, and that's a different deal, then 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 I'm probably going to take him at his word that he just realized, man, I don't want to recruit. I don't want to, you know, the the – the grossness of college football, I just don't want to be a part of. That's fine. Yeah. I got to trust him at his word on those things because I have no reason not to. If he's got another job in the next, you know, six to 12 months, then, and then I'll, you know. Yeah. Or before, a, before next a, football he, season. He, How's that? he goes on, he goes in the bag of liars, which 90% of these coaches are. And, and, you know, you just never can trust anything that he says again. Yeah. That's my, my initial guess was, uh, he may have gotten down here in the middle of all the recruiting madness and realized this is dumb. I didn't have to do any of this in the NFL. I didn't have yep. to talk to 17, 18 year old kids. I, I can't like, imagine anybody thinking the college game is better from a coaching perspective or administrative perspective than, than the NFL. Like I just, I just can't the idea of having to go into a house and sell yourself to a kid and convince them to come play for you and your mini golf course. Like, I feel like all of these guys really just want to hang themselves half the time when they get home. <laughs> like, I really do. Like, I, you, you can say all they want. Listen, when I watch the videos of Brian Kelly and, and Nick Saban dancing with these kids, that's great. I heard – I heard Steve Spurrier talking about when he was recruiting a kid, like he played that dance dance revolution game in their house because that's what they were doing. Yeah. That's what they're into. Recruiting. Like, you know, I know these guys, these are, I like, I know these style of people. Yeah. Okay. These are hardcore known as general assholes, CEO, tough, serious people knowing that they have to do that to get talent just knows that they just want to go home and hang themselves. Oh, yes. Oh, 100%. They just, they just hate that part of their job. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It really is. So, 
<laughs> the whole thing is so dumb. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.